Why is it? Why is Sufism not known in the West? Yes. Why have we lost this tradition of divine love? Yes. Um, what is interesting historically is the, the real contact Sufism had with the West was through troubadour poetry. Because one of the little known facts is while the crusades were being fought, there was this intermingling of traditions in which the troubadours who went with the crusaders to the East, they met and Sufi poets, because you can see that in troubadour poetry. And they brought back to the West this tradition of love, which came from the Sufis. It wasn't in the West before, this tradition of, really, of, of divine love, but it got misinterpreted or not misint or in brought into the whole tradition of courtly love which then became our Western tradition of romantic love. And in the West we are obsessed with romantic love. It is, you can, not just in Hollywood movies, in people's lives, it is, for many people it is the one powerful force of love that draws them, sadly often from relationship to relationship, this search of romantic love. And historically it really comes from Sufism, but they took out of the, or they misunderstood, because at that time the Sufi poets used images of, for example, a beautiful woman to describe attributes of God. There is a whole Sufi symbolism of the eyebrow meaning this, the mole on the cheek meaning that. And I think the troubadour poets, they listened to the poetry, they were caught with the feeling of love, with the feeling of devotion, with the feeling of beauty and celebration. And when they brought it back to the West, when the Crusaders came home, they then didn't understand that what was being described was not the earthly beloved, but that the Sufi poets had been using the earthly beloved as a symbol of the divine beloved. In the West we were left with this kind of shadow of the real mystical love, which became romantic love, which can, of course you can never be fulfilled by. It's an ideal. And of course this went hand in hand with the the, the church's desire to re suppress mystics, even the great mystic St. Teresa of Avila had to be very careful about describing her mystical experiences and other mystics were repressed by the Inquisition, so it's like the we just got the icing on the cake without the cake and now there is this sense that we have been betrayed somewhere, that something, if you call it the feminine, has been neglected because Sufism is very much about the feminine side of love, the longing. This is like everything in this world, love has two sides. There is the masculine side of love, I love you. And then there is the feminine side of love, I am waiting for you. I am longing for you. This is the cup waiting to be filled. And we have a, a society that really has a secret longing for love, a secret longing to be, for this inner need to be met. And this is why they say Rumi is the most popular poet today. And he is what? He is, a, he is a Sufi scholar, I mean mystic and also theologian, you know, who lived centuries and centuries ago. But he speaks about this mystery of love. He speaks about this mystery of divine love. I think if people really knew what was involved, they wouldn't actually read Rumi because... Um, the love that Rumi talks about is the love that annihilates you, the love that tears you apart, the love that destroys the ego, the love that bewilders the mind, the love that turns you away from this world and turns you back to God. There's this lovely Persian saying, the world was full of beautiful things until an old man with a beard turned my heart aflame with love. Now how can it look? at the world around which hides the face of my beloved. Of course, later you realize the world is also the face of the beloved. Wheresoever you turn, there is the face of God. But as I say, the love that Rumi talks about is a dangerous love, is a love of annihilation, a love of death. Of course, a love of joyous death. We go, as I said, gladly to the gallows like Al-Halaj, although sometimes not so gladly. But. Uh, yeah, there is this secret longing in the heart of Western civilization for a love that can't be bought and sold. Again, to quote Rumi when he says, different 
degrees of domination and servitude are what you know as love. But love is different. It arrives complete just there like the moon at the window. Seek only that of which you have no clue. Desire only that of which you have no hope. This is not the Oxus River or some little creek. This is the shoreless sea. Here swimming ends always in drowning.